Hi, I'm Kerry Gleason, author of the award-winning screenplay North Star, The Life of Frederick Douglass. And as inspirational as Frederick Douglass was, Anna Murray Douglas was equally inspirational. She was his wife, and um, in the screenplay she's got a relatively small role, but it is very, very important. And there are two scenes in particular that I think audiences will walk away from this film remembering perhaps for the rest of their lives. And the final scene of the movie, uh, Anna summarizes the life of Frederick and crystallizes what he's all about in a way that I don't think any other character could possibly do. And I, I, wrote, the character, I wrote the script that way because I felt that um, it, it had to come from somebody close to Frederick um, who loved and respected him and, and cherished what he was all about. So, in this month of February, as we celebrate the amazing life of Frederick Douglass, let's also celebrate the amazing life of Anna Murray Douglass. Anna Murray Douglass the best portrait of Anna Murray Douglas comes from daughter Rosetta Douglas Sprague, who wrote a tribute, My Mother As I Recall Her. I paraphrase from that short book. Too often are the facts of great sacrifices and heroic efforts of the wives of renowned men overshadowed by the achievements of the men, and the wonderful and beautiful part she has played so well is overlooked. The story of Frederick Douglass's hopes and aspirations and longing desire for freedom has been told. You all know it. It was a story made possible through the unswerving loyalty of Anna Murray. Anna Murray, a free woman, was one of 12 children, seven of whom were born into slavery. She married Frederick in 1838, entering the world of a fugitive existence, yet supporting her husband in his own convictions. When Frederick crossed the ocean in exile from 1846 to 1848, Anna sustained herself and four children by binding shoes. She lived in fear that Frederick would never be able to return and that she might be taken from her children for aiding in his escape. In Frederick's absence, Anna worked tirelessly for the Anti-Slavery Society. Later, they moved to Rochester, New York, which she found to be less cordial than Massachusetts. She took pride in her husband's accomplishments. It was her pleasure to know that when he stood up before an audience, that his linen was immaculate and she had made it so. On publication day for the North Star, there was rejoicing and she would set the table with a huge feast to celebrate. Perhaps no other home received under its roof a more varied class of people than did our home. From the highest dignitaries to the lowliest person, bond or free, white or black were welcomed, and Mother was equally gracious to all. Anna was afflicted with sudden paralysis in 1882 and died. Her grave rests next to Frederick's on a Mount Hope Cemetery hill, a short distance from the site of their hallowed home, where the panting fugitive, the weary traveler, and the lonely emigrant received the bounty of her generous heart.